Hello guys and welcome back to a new video. I have probably never been this excited for a video ever because Real Steady 2 is coming up and they're currently having a uh, beta testing going on and I'm one of the people that are doing some beta testing and this thing looks promising. You probably saw that Nurk and oh my god made videos about it already and it's true, it's coming and let's just say I am beyond excited about this one, let's keep going. So in this first video I'm not gonna go super in-depth with everything when it comes to bitrates, codecs and all that stuff because this is still a beta version and I wanted to save that part until everything is running perfectly so make sure to subscribe and keep updated because I will make multiple more videos about Real Steady Go. Let's jump straight to the program and I'll show you how the interface looks like and how easy it is to work with compared to the old Real Steady one. So I just launched the GoPro Player app and what I realized is that I never use Hypersmooth anymore so I don't have any clips with Hypersmooth on and I really want to test if Hypersmooth works with Real Steady. I mean that you can have Hypersmooth on on your clips and still use Real Steady so luckily I got one of the new GoPro 10s and I'm just gonna pop it up and then we can set it up. Uh, I need to set this up anyways, so let's, yeah. I'm just gonna do some cruising anyways, so I'm gonna fly one pack with the Chimera, so let's fly one really quick pack to to have some clips with Hypersmooth to test it on, and let's, yeah, let's do it. Alrighty, so the testing is done. And we got the clips. Uh, it felt weird to put on Hypersmooth because <laughs> I haven't used it in years. So let's start with that clip actually because I'm also curious if you can actually use Real Steady with Hypersmooth on. So yeah, let's do that first. All right, so I have imported the clip to my computer and it's this one. I shot it in 4x3 still even with Hypersmooth on because I wasn't sure if that would work but it looks like it will so... I'm just gonna find the beginning of the video. So this is with Hypersmooth on. Um, I can see that the stabilization works. It, it has the Hypersmooth feeling. Um, so basically what I can do now is just press this thing. And you see that? It, it turned on Hypersmooth and it um, made it to 16.9 format. So let's play it and I can see that you get more of that real steady feel of it, but the picture is really cropped in. Uh, I don't know if there is some settings I can do for that, but I can verify that it works with Hypersmooth and real steady on top of that, which is so cool. Um, let me see if I can turn down the smoothness a little bit and see if that helps. Uh, yeah, that helps a lot. Now we're back to the more natural, uh, real steady feel of it. So, yeah, I'm gonna experiment more with this, but yeah, can confirm. You can use Hypersmooth in camera and add real steady after, which is freaking cool. All right, so it works with Hypersmooth. Let's see uh, what else we can do. And I'm gonna load another clip. This was from a few weeks ago. We shot commercials for Toyota and a helicopter company. So same thing here, this is the game changer. You can see here, if I scroll in a little bit and start the clip, you see that hyper smooth, no, I mean real steady is turned off and in just a click, it works. And that is insane because we used to use real steady one. You had to set your settings like, and you have to render the whole thing, wait for it forever, and then you're gonna watch it and like, oh no, I needed to make some changes. Here you can just toggle on real steady and <laughs> that is insane. So let's go back again, turn off real steady, on real steady. Do you see how fast that is? Also what's super interesting is because sometimes you wanna change smoothness and stuff, so what you can do here is just change the smoothness, hit apply, 
and it literally takes two to three seconds to apply some changes and that is honestly freaking cool and after the changes you can just hit space and it's gonna start playback again so so yeah obviously this is revolutionary and yeah i you guys see it you've seen it other people did it nurk uh, oh my god these guys did it and yeah we have the same opinion it works flawless and i can't wait for the full version to come out because this program is going to be super insane let's hop over to the next thing that is the render time because <laughs> people have used real steady one let's just say you gotta be pretty patient because it takes a long time and i'm not gonna do all types of testings and codecs and etc. But what I'm gonna do is a side by side comparison on how fast Real Steady 1 renders one clip and then how fast Real Steady 2 renders the same clip. So let's load it up in Real Steady 1 first. All right, so I have now loaded up a clip in Real Steady 1. It's just a minute long clip and I'm gonna hit render and I'm gonna start a timer and we're gonna see how long time it takes with Real Steady 1. It is currently going, so let's check back when this is done. Alright, so it has now been one minute and it has barely moved, so this is what I'm used to. I've been, honestly, I've been waiting so long for Real Steady to render during the last year. It's not even fun. So let's, let's just wait for this to be done. I'm gonna show you the time, the exact time it's done, and then we're gonna do the same thing in Real Steady 2. And I'm gonna show you a difference that's probably so crazy, you probably won't believe it. All right, it's now closing in to three minutes. It's probably rendered one fifth of the video. And I forgot to tell you, I'm using the MacBook Pro with the M1 chip, which is supposed to be pretty, pretty fast. So I'm excited to see how good the Real Steady 2 will do. But for now, you're just gonna sit there and wait. Is this what it used to be? I've been waiting, I'm at 12 minutes right now. Waiting for a clip that's a minute long-ish. It's done, 15 minutes and 21 seconds. So let's see how Real Steady 2 will perform. So as you saw, it took 15 minutes with Real Steady 1 to render this clip, which is normal for Real Steady 1, but let's see how Real Steady 2 will perform. I have now imported the same clip. I'm just gonna add Real Steady. I'm nothing with the, with the settings of the smoothness or anything because I didn't do that on the other clip. So I'm now at the export queue in Real Steady 2 and I'm gonna do the same thing. Just start rendering in 3, 2, 1. The timer has now started. So we're gonna see and uh, it's already at 10%. God damn, Real Steady, you did something. I'm stoked. It's 20% done. It's, it's, it hasn't been even half a minute. I, I, one part of me don't wanna believe this because it, it's so fast. The other part of me is excited because being able to render this fast, it's, yeah, it's crazy. You guys want to know a secret? It's been... I'm not gonna tell you. Because if we wait for five more seconds... Three, two, I would say... It's done! It has exported a clip that is one minute and ten seconds. And it exported that in... 56 seconds. That means that if I was opening this clip without Real Steady, it would take me longer to view the clip than it took to process it with Real Steady Go. Do you guys feel the same way as me? Excited? I guess so. Anyways, let's jump over to the next segment because this is this is just, you know, too exciting. I <laughs> can't. So obviously you did see that the render time was 15 times faster than Real Steady 1, but there's also another thing that I'm super excited about and that is batch exporting. That means you can actually just send a lot of clips to the render queue and you can then batch export all of them instead of just going through one and one clips. So I'm gonna show you real quick how that works. Okay, the GoPro queue thing and I'm gonna add another clip. Uh, let's do this one. 
right here. And what you can do, you, if you get the point, you can add a lot of clips and then you can just press start and it will automatically render all the clips you sent to the render queue, which is brilliant because sometimes you have a lot of clips and you don't wanna like sit and wait for every single clip to be done and uh, open the next one, done. Oh, yeah, you get a point. So that's also a super nice feature. So I think what's last now is that I just wanna walk you through all the things that I find so much better with Real Steady 2 and my final thoughts and why I think this is a game changer when it comes to video stabilization. All right, you made it this far in the video. That's awesome. And as I said earlier, subscribe to my channel because I will make a lot of more content with Real Steady 2 the next few weeks or month because yeah, there's a lot of more good things coming. This is still a beta version, but let's start running through all the things that I like about Real Steady 2. And there is big things and there's also small things, but like those combined makes everything just way better. So the first thing is obviously, as we have seen, the render speed. It is so fast rendering. It's, it's It feels like a joke. It's like, you render it and like gone. And when talking about rendering, I also gonna add a point, which is you can choose to get like a alert or like a sound when the render is done. And that's also something that's so cool because I remember the real steady one, it didn't make a sound, it didn't make anything. So what I typically would do is just like start rendering it and go to YouTube, watch that. And when I got back, it might have been done a long time ago, but I didn't know because there was no alerts or sound. So that's one huge thing. The next thing is the batch render. It's awesome because I do this commercially and for me to just like do a lot of renders at the same time is super cool. I know people found a way to do it in real steady one, like opening a lot of different tabs and like it was a mess, but this works way, way better. Um, the next thing is being able to export in different codecs. I love ProRes, I love everything that has to be with high quality and um, you can change bit rates with this new real steady you can choose different codecs and uh, this is still a better version i don't know how it will be but as far as i know by now it is awesome and i really really like it the next thing is that you can actually use real steady 2 without wi-fi connected because that used to be a problem with real steady 1 if it wasn't connected to wi-fi um you couldn't use real steady with which like people often do this uh, home but sometimes you were maybe traveling on a train or airplane or something like that and you couldn't simply process clips because you weren't connected to a wi-fi the next thing that is super cool is that you can actually choose output folder because it used to be just able to save the smoothed file in the same folder as the original clips and what a lot of people had problems with was that they just took the SD cards out of their GoPros and put it in their computers and tried to export with real steady but the problem then was that if your SD card was all close to full it would just like stop rendering and create a lot of problems so being able to choose an output folder is super super smart. Obviously we also gotta mention that you can have set HyperSmooth in your GoPro and still use Real Steady, which is super, super smart. And that has actually been one of my biggest fears to accidentally put HyperSmooth on the GoPro and not being able to stabilize it with Real Steady, but now you can do both. So is this going to be a game changer? Yes, I do absolutely believe that. This is a better version. I know it's gonna be even better. Um, yeah, I'm just excited. I haven't had any problems personal uh, and I think the GoPro team just does a wonderful job and I gotta give it to GoPro too. They are asking the pilots, the community to be testers of this product and that's what makes the product so great because we can give them responses and give them inputs of what we, the audience, the users, the consumers actually want in a product like Real Steady. So yeah. Big ups to GoPro, the whole team, everything has been perfect and I'm looking forward to see what else Real Steady can come up with when the final version is out. Which I don't know the time of yet, I don't know any of this information, you probably saw that in the other videos, we don't know the time of um, release, if you get it for free, if you have Real Steady 1 and all that other stuff. The only thing I know is that it's gonna be awesome and it's worth the wait and you should subscribe to me because I will post more about this later on. Stay safe, be excited because a lot of cool things are coming up and I'll see you guys in the next video.